Hi guys, it's Nadia Shields from Ibali Crafts and today I would like to show you how to make this Christmas bauble. But first, here's a list of materials. Right, what I thought I would show you first is how this is going to look when we have created a couple of petals. Um, so this section is going to sit over our bobble and then we're going to tie the ends um, around another one of those jump rings together and that will finish off the piece. We're going to start off by creating each individual petal, then create the beige wave pattern um, and then create all of these individual petals as well which will enable us then to create the bigger sort of wave pattern with a pearl in the center. So I'm going to shift this all up so that you can see what I'm doing roughly to about here and then I'm going to use my trusty pins to have it all pinned down. I like doing that because that will enable me to make sure nothing shifts while I'm working. Okay so I'm going to start off with the very first chord which in my case was a beige chord because that will give me the sort of nice lighter pattern at the bottom here but of course color is entirely up to you. Um, so each of the chords needs to be about a meter long of the 0.4 long chord. If you're using thicker chord it doesn't need to be quite as long obviously because you, you cover more area with thicker chord. The 0.4 um, you need about a meter. Right we're going to attach this chord to the jump ring with a lark's head knot. We're going to feed the cord once we have folded in half underneath the jump ring, bring it towards us and then feed the two legs through and this attaches the cord to our jump ring and we're going to tuck this away nice and tight so that it doesn't shift because it's quite helpful when you're attaching new cords to it that this is nice and tight. So what we're going to do next is um, attach our working cords to what I call the core cord all right. So again a meter is enough for this. I've used chocolate um, for this color. So we're going to feed that underneath the core and fold it in half and then simply tie an overhand knot. And that's it. And then we're going to pull that tight and push it up. And that's all we need to do. So we need seven of the chocolates and then one of the cream. Now I have all of my cords attached. I just like to come and grab them all and give them a nice little tug that makes sure that they are all nicely attached. So I'm going to set aside the right hand section of cords for now and release the core cord from your macrame board and we're going to separate these out and just keep the left hand core cord and the other we're just going to tuck away again into our board again nice and tight. And we're going to use this to attach all of our working cords starting from the top. So I'm going to hold this in my right hand, bring over the working cord from the top and switch over hands. All right, so we'll have our working cord in our left, uh, sorry, our core cord in our left and our working cord in our right. And we're going to attach this using a right double half hitch, which goes clockwise through the loop like so, so it creates a loop. We'll pull that tight and make sure that you actually bring your core cord up um, to tie the knot. I'll show you why in a second and then we're going to finish up the knot by repeating what we've just done. So it's a clockwise motion through the loop and just basically pull it tight. So the reason why you have to pull your core cord up is because if you have it further down while you're tying the knot, these little cords here will be slack and it won't look right. So that is why we will bring our core cord up when we're tying. So next step is I'm going to next one again. So we're going to bring this down and we're going to go clockwise through the loop and pull tight and that's all it is. And that's all it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just carry on from top to bottom until all of the cords are attached and just go one after the other in sequence. Right. 
Right, so now we have our last cord attached. So we finished with that section. You can see how it's already creating the, uh, the sort of pattern here at the top. So we're going to grab these cords that we've just attached and we'll shift them aside because now we need to repeat what we've done um, on the other side. So I'm going to bring down the cord from the top and what we're going to do next now is release the core cord from the bottom, the last one that we have here. And we're going to repeat the exact same process just from the other side. So I'm going to bring down my working cord on the, um, on the top, switch hands and make sure that your core cord must always be over your working cords, otherwise um, the knots won't look right. So I'm going to just take that initial core cord and tuck this into my macrame board, which will give me a little bit more stability. And because it's a mirror image, what we're going to tie now is a left double half hitch, which goes anti-clockwise over your core, out towards the left. So it creates a loop like so. And then we pull that tight. Just remember that you need to bring your core cord up to give us a nice tight look. And then we will repeat. And that's it. So now we're going to do again is repeat this and bring down all of the cords and attach it to this core cord. Um, and then when we're finished, I'm going to show you the next step. Right, so now we have attached all of our cords and what needs to happen now, separate these out again. And you can see that we have an equal number of cords on either side, all right? So what we need to do now is we're crisscrossing our way until we have no cords left. So what will happen, I'm going to start off with the very first innermost cord on the right-hand side, all right? Bring this across like so. Set these aside for now. We're going to use them again in a second. Tuck it into my board. And what I'm going to do, this very first cord is going to act as my core cord from now on. So I'm going to grab this. And all of these cords are going to get attached to this core cord with right double half hitches. So remember, it's <clears throat> clockwise through the loop and pull tight. And just make sure when you're pulling it tight to get right in the middle. Pull it tight so that makes sure that it's a nice tight um, kind of weave as you're working. And then when you're finished, just move on to the next cord and repeat what you've just done. And set aside the cords you've just knotted. You can tuck them into your board to keep them out of your way. I quite like doing that, otherwise sometimes with a lot of cords it can get quite messy. And just keep doing that until you actually get to the end. And just always try when, you, when you're tightening your knots to kind of bring your core cord up towards the previous row to make sure that there's no gap in between the rows. If you pull your core cord downwards, there will be a gap, which can be nice in some patterns, but for this we want a really nice tight weave. Right, so when you have finished knotting the second row, we're going to take this core cord, what will happen to it, we're going to tuck it away as well. And this will happen with every cord that you bring out. So in essence, you're going to end up having no cords left when you get to the bottom here. So what will happen next now is we will set aside these cords here. And what we need to do now is take a cord from the left hand side and use that as our core. And we're going to bring this across towards the right. Tuck these cords into your board on the left. And now we are going to be using the cords on the right as our working cords. And we'll attach these cords to the core with left double half hitches because we're knotting from left to right. So left double half hitch, remember, goes anti-clockwise through the loop out towards the left and then pull tight and remember to repeat for the procedure to complete the knot and then just keep working your way towards the end. Right, again now we have arrived at the end, so we're going to take this core cord and tuck it into our macrame board. And this is all you have to do to create the first section. So, you have your left hand side and your right hand side. And now we're going to just repeat what we've done from now on. You just keep zigzagging left to right until you have got no cords left. And that's it, that's the first section done.
right so now that we have knotted away all of the cords what we need to do is bring down the beige at the top here to meet up with the two that we have at the bottom and to do that I'm just going to pick up the first one and I quite like to use a needle as an anchor point because that gives me a nice crisp sort of edge so I'm going to stick it in the corner at a slight angle so that it can't slip off and I take the cream cord and I bring it across all of these um, working cords and pull it down towards me and what we're going to do now is just take these cords here and we'll attach those to that core cord with the left double half hitches and that will basically just bring this core cord down towards the middle so that it meets up with the other two so that we can then begin to um, to knot the wavy pattern um, at the bottom. So I'm just going to carry on with this and obviously it's exactly the same on the other side and remember that when you're switching sides and you're mirroring the steps you have done um, the, the knots used on the other side are also a mirror image of what you're using so because we're using left double half hitches on this side if you shift across on the other side there will be right double half hitches right so we're nearly at the bottom and then we're going to move over and do the same on the other side and try and make a nice straight sort of line. So this creates a nice little border as well. Uh, it looks nice and tidy. So we're going to set this aside, um, the whole bunch of cords here, and we're going to do exactly the same. So we'll pick up the, um, the beige cord from here. I'm going to take the needle out of here, and you can see this is a nice sort of crisp edge. I'm going to do the same, remember to put it in at an angle. Bring the cord down towards you, and then we're going to tie right double half hitches. Um, to start the row. Okay, easy, move on to the next one. And just carry on with the row. It's quite, I find personally quite important to try and keep the tension even and um, that will give you even and tidy knots um, as you knot along. So I just tend to try and pull with the same force, if that makes any sense, as not to push. If you if you pull too hard um, on one knot and not so hard on the other, the um, the knots get pushed together and others don't. So then the um, the whole thing distorts a little bit. So I like to try and keep the tension the same. But that's easily practiced with just a couple of pieces beforehand if you're not comfortable with these knots yet. Right, so at the bottom, it doesn't matter which is attached to which, I just tend to continue to run right. I always attach left to right and that will close off the bottom and that has now brought the two beige cords from the top to the center. So, now the next step is we're not going to use the, um, <coughs> the brown cords at all so I'm just going to tuck these out of the way um, and what we're going to do here I hope you can see the color is not very favorable for demonstrating so um, I wonder if I can find something a little bit darker right so now that we have brought the beige cords at the bottom and I found something a bit darker than we can use so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing now um, okay, so we can go on to the next step, and that is to create um, this little wavy section here. So we're going to add in 8 o seed beads in the center and 11 o's um, between each crossover. Okay, so we're going to start showing you how to do that. And um, first of all, we're going to separate these cords um, into two sections. So we have two to the left, two on the right. So what's going to happen here is because the 8 o is a little bit too big for just um, two lark's head knots at the top, two double half hitches on the top and two on the right. We're going to add in one half hitch. Okay, so the way this is going to work is we take the outer cord as our working cord and the inner as our core. All right, so I'm going to pass these over. The core needs to go into my left hand, working cord to right, and I'm going to go right double half hitch one. Pass the core cord over your working cord, left double half hitch, two, and then repeat again. Switch your cords. very important that it goes over your working cord when you're switching. 
and then right double half hitch that's three so now we've made three and we've made sure that the cord is coming out towards the center which will then be able to accommodate the uh, 80 seat beads now we're going to shift across to the other side we're going to do exactly the same thing so outer is a working inner is our core switch over and we're going to tie a left double half hitch one switch over core over then the right double half hitch two and again we switch over make sure core is on the top and then a left double half hitch towards the center which will bring the cord in towards the center okay so now it's time to add the eta i'm going to use both of the seed beads now if you struggle to um, add in seed beads because of the endings um, you can come in with your pair of scissors I've already done it here but you come and cut these at a slight angle like that and this will give you a little bit of a point so that's much easier to feed on a bead also what I like to do is I just stagger the ends so that they don't try and pass through the bead at the exact same time which makes it a lot easier it's not so much of a problem with the eight toes um, but when you're having to thread on 11 O's can be a bit of a problem so now we're going to do exactly the same and we're going to take the innermost cord and we'll attach it again to the core with a one right double half hitch switch hands left double half hitch two switch hands right double half hitch so that's three double half hitches just to accommodate the bead rather than your conventional two we're going to do exactly the same so this core cord comes over and you're working cord out towards the left so it's um, left double half hitch or half hitch come across right half hitch and come across again and that's a left half hitch I really should call them half hitches because it's one in each direction so double half hitch would be two revolutions in the same direction so let's call them half hitches from now on so now what we need to do next is just basically tie these two cords together the core cords and we're going to use a right double half hitch to bring them across and it's really important that you always use um, a right double half hitch in the center meaning that you're attaching the left to the right um, to get the pattern right if you kind of switch over every time you will get a different pattern um, it won't get that nice continuous sort of uh, DNA shape if you know what I mean okay so you can see here it's frayed a bit you get a kind of liquid that's called freight check which is great um, I don't have any at the moment but it's fantastic for um, adding beads because it makes the endings quite hard so it's a bit like a fabric stiffener I think so now we're going to take an 11 O and add it to the outermost left cord we'll do the same with the cord on the right so we're going to take an 11 O add it to that cord on the outside so and all we're going to do is we repeat the process from the start except that now we have added in a seed bead so it's one, two, three. And remember, when you're adding in an ATO, these cords, the working cords, need to come in towards the center. Same again on the other side. So cross one, two, There we go so now we have the two cords coming out the center and basically you would just repeat the process from now on until you have enough length all right so talking about length so it just depends what um, sort of size bauble you've got I've got a 58 millimeter bauble um, and I have used about seven six or seven loops but I'm not hundred percent sure until I actually get to the end if I need to make more or not so it just depends and um, because we're going to add in another one of the jump rings and attach these cords to it so you can only actually really tell at the end uh, when you try on the project to see if it fits if you need to maybe make an extra length or not so as I said you're going to have to test it with your own bubble when you've finished creating this pattern here um, we're going to make a few more of these petals um, you need about two of these at least to start creating 
this sort of pattern design in the center here that we have in between two of those beige patterns all right so I'm going to place this design so that I can actually show you how to create it so you need to push two of the petals together and preferably take a pin and make sure you pin everything down nice and tightly you want them to sit nice and close together um, so that nothing can shift because we're going to use the cords from the left and right to work um, together. So I'm going to pin this down here as well. All right. So in essence, it's exactly the same design that we have used um, at the top here. We're just going to repeat the section here. So I'm going to grab these cords here and set aside as many cords as you can because obviously there will be a lot by the end you have um, finished your design. And what I'm going to do first is try to align these two petals. I'm going to grab the very first chord from the right hand petal and that is going to become my core chord. I'm going to be attaching these working chords to it. So I'm going to bring this across and I am just very simply going to attach it with a right double half hitch. And I'm going to just make sure that it is attached nice and tight so this now brings these two chords together so for now I'm just going to set this aside what we're going to do next now on the end here I am going to add a 6-0 seed bead now you can add anything you like this really is just to add in a little bit of elevation because when you come around and you create the bend there will be a gap between the top row and the bottom row so may as well fill it with something and I decided that a 6-0 would look perfect for that it's a great size but you could use anything you can use a Swarovski crystal if you like or a round bead and um, you're just going to have to test and see what looks nice so you're going to do that here as well and we're going to do exactly the same on the other side so I'm going to grab the two cords here and feed on a 6-0 onto the last two chords as well on the right hand side and feed that through and add an 11-0 on the bead so this is just to create like a step effect um, I'll show you just now when we get knotting so I'm going to feed this on now I like to prepare first before I actually start working so I'm going to carry on and um, not. So I'm going to grab this cord that I have just had and I'm going to use that as my core and I'm going to carry on knotting so I'm going to attach all of the cords remaining on the left hand side and just keep knotting until and just try and keep it nice and tight So now we're getting to the one with the bead. You can already see how it lifts the row away from the bottom, the top row. And now I'm going to grab the first one coming out of the 6-0, attach this as well. And the next one. And now these are set in place. Okay, so now what we're going to do now is exactly the same as we did for the petals. I'm going to set these aside, grab the first cord in the center and use that as my core and I'm just going to knot my row with the left hand cords as my working cord like so and the neater and closer you get to the first row oh sorry the, the closer you get to the first row the neater it will actually be um, if there is a gap in between it'll look a little bit untidy so if you can just try and get right in there to get it closely as possible to the previous row and then only lift away when you sort of get to the 11 no seed bead and then that will naturally kind of create a lift so pull that tight and now move on to the next one and now this is the 6-0 attached very simple so now this is the first part of the sort of curve. What we need to do, you can see here in this one that there's one, two, three rows. And I'm going to create this pattern by again taking the very first chord on the left hand side, bring it across and not the very same 
into the very same direction. This is precisely what we've done at the top, so it's actually quite repetitive. Um, except that when we get to the center it's going to change a little bit because obviously we need to create that curvature and we need to add a space for for the bead um, now I believe that these are 60 uh, or sorry eight millimeter pearls six or eight millimeter pearls I'm going to have to confirm that I will put that into the uh, materials list at the beginning obviously you'll be able to see what we're going to be using um, so now I'm going to take the next one and do exactly the same thing so I'm going to grab the first cord pull it up and just tighten it as I said you have to try and be really neat a little trick to try and get closer is kind of push the cord down the working cord down and the core cord up and that will get as close to the previous row as possible um, so that it's nice and tight so only two left and again as before when you have finished with these rows I'm just going to tuck these core cords away for now and do the same on the other side. We're not going to use them just yet. Use them in a second. Tuck these away. And we have one more row to do, so that means I'm just going to grab one more cord. Okay, so now we are at the center so the first thing we're going to do is now take these core cords coming out of the last row we create on either side so what I'm going to do now is these cords are going to come back towards the center like so so I'm going to start with the right hand side and I'm going to split the cords make sure that I am using equal amounts on either side so I'm going to bring this across and these cords we're basically reversing knotting direction we've been knotting um, left double half hitches all along so now we're switching hand okay core over your working cord and we are now knotting right double half hitches so in the other direction and you can see how this will force the core the cord to create a curvature that is coming back towards the center like so moving on to the next one and we'll leave it at that so then we're going to create the same on the other side so you're going to take this cord here switch it over and remember it's the other side so these are left double half hitches as where they were right double half hitches before And just remember to be nice and tidy. In the last section here. Okay, so you may have noticed that I haven't attached one of the cords. This is because we're going to use a pearl now um, to attached to the section here so I'm going to feed through sometimes these pearls these are shell pearls so you may need to use a bead reamer to make the hole a little bit larger generally I would put two cords through from the center but because the holes are quite tiny I'm just going to go with one hopefully it'll fit sometimes they're quite tough to get on so I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it to use my scissors and create like a little slant like a point and hopefully this will now go through here we go so that was quite easy so now this speed is going to sit in the center and I'm going to attach it to the right hand cord because it belongs to that side so just push it up with your finger and your thumb and kind of encase it with 
the sort of wave we have just created and then just close off and make sure that you touch left to right okay so it's quite important for this pattern in particular um, and you'll see why in a second so I'm going to close this off okay so the next step now is to add seed beads so I'm going to create take these and tuck these into the front and the reason why we need to add seed beads now is because obviously as the row grows there is a circumference difference and there's a gap in between the, these rows here, these cords here and then the top row so we need to compensate for that by adding in seed beads. You could also if you wanted to add in different colored cords um, to compensate for that. I just thought seed beads would actually look quite nice. I'm just going to trim this off so that I can thread this on. Alright, so that's one. And then for the outside, obviously, because the the, um, the gap is going to be even bigger, I'm going to use two 11 O's as opposed to just one. Like so. And another. And feed this on. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Alright, so now we have these attached and I'm going to start with the left. So I'm going to take this and attach all of the remaining cords. Push it up. And keep knotting. It's quite important to attach the last cord, your core cord that you are momentarily knotting to. This cord will be attached to the last cord coming out of the uh, right hand row. So I'm going to bring this across and I'm going to attach this with a right double half hitch. And this creates a continuation of that row if that makes any sense. So you'll be able to see that in a second. See how it comes across? And this is because we have attached the core, this left hand core cord to the right hand core cord. So now we're going to do the same with this one here and you see how nicely the um, the seed beads actually bridge the um, the gap. Um, if you tried to just pull that tight it would just distort the whole design so it's quite important to replace this gap with something. Okay so now again remember that we need to attach the left hand core to the right hand core with a right double half hitch like so and again so now what we need to do is exactly the same with the remaining cords on the right hand side I'm going to bring these across and attach these So now we are at the end um, and we now need to start by creating the next section here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. For that we need to set aside two of the cords. We're just going to cut these off later so we're done with those. We're going to take those and put those at the top. I'm not going to use those anymore. And now we're going to start to create the next section. So I'm going to set this aside. Again split the cords make sure you have an equal amount on either side so what we need to do now is actually lose one of the three rows because we want to taper it down from three to two to one okay so I'm going to show you how to do that so I'm going to take the cord that is the first one and use that to attach to the next two so that's one and then two and that has sort of done away with that row so kind of you worked it into the design okay so now the next step is to actually add um, a Swarovski bead which I really like working with because they really add a little bit of glitz and glimmer to your pieces um, for this I have used some gorgeous um, sort of gold I think they're AB gold bicones for Swarovski very beautiful. So I'm going to feed this onto that cord here and then again 
bring it across and attach it to those two core cords like so and then move on to the next one and attach it to that and that basically creates the continuation of these rows as well as feeding on um, the bead and tying it in place and on the outside I'm going to add I think it's uh, two 11 nose so that's one two again this now is entirely up to how you want to do it this is just a personal preference of mine I've sort of decided that this looks nice um, to put 11 nose and that it fits nicely around the bicone but um, you could put whatever you like we have some gorgeous um, magatama seed beads which are kind of like drop seed beads that will look beautiful there as well could add that for instance whatever grabs your fancy you're obviously just going to have to make sure that it fits nicely that and um, there's no gap or that it's not too big it must just fit nicely you're just going to have to try and see what works best so I'm just going to shift this up a tiny bit because we're moving downwards so now this is the first section created as I said we're going to cut these off okay so I'm now going to make sure that I have an equal amount so you can see here this one two three are the cords that are coming out of these top rows so this is my next section here I'm going to take these and to give uh, the illusion of continuing with two I'm going to grab the last two cords and the third cord in line is going to be my working cord so I'm going to bring it across and attach it to the two core cords coming out of the design and then moving on to the next section okay there we go and now this creates continuation just double check that this kind of looks like they are coming out of the other side so again we need um, one of our bicones feed that on and tie this off and this puts it into place and we'll carry on And then again as before on the beat the um, cord on top it's going to be five of our 11 o's snip these off sorry that's two and then an eight o rather than five so I'm gonna feed this on one two and then it's an eight o and one two right and feed this through and then just attach this corner oops i'm missing one now where did it go sometimes i think i'm becoming blind as a bat there we go so now it's on right so i'm now going to attach these to my cores as well and this starts the pattern off and obviously the next step now is to lose an extra row okay but first we need to create the next um, kind of oval wavy effect so I'm going to do what I've done before so reverse knotting direction and add another cord and one more so it doesn't actually matter which of the center cords you use to attach the bead to um, at all so you can just decide which side you want to do it with so the next one is exactly the same so reverse knotting direction with your cord Here we are, and then there's the last cord left on the left hand side, which I'm going to use to attach my bike onto. So, for this one, this is like a rose gold bicone that I chose, which thought 
match the color quite nicely so I'm going to feed this on I think it's a tiny bit smaller than the AB's tied into place again personal preference you could use anything Pre previously I actually chosen a tiger's eye to go in there but then I decided the color doesn't actually go with it and went with the rose gold which I'm actually quite happy with because the color looks nice so again you can see that there's a tiny gap between top and bottom so we need to compensate for that again and I'm going to use 11O to fill the gap goes through that's one and on the other side and then we're just going to not this so it's really simple to do and the pattern grows quite quickly here we are and then remember to attach the left hand core cord to your right hand cord you always have to go this way unless of course you start it on the opposite side when you made your design um, you need to do it to create this continuation of the pattern otherwise you don't get the desired effect pull this through and then we're nearly there to create the next section which is pretty similar to the first two um, I didn't want to remove two more cords otherwise the um, otherwise the um, the design would have shrunk too much so I've only set aside one cord from now on so each time it's just one and we're now reducing from two to one so remember we need to take the last cord and attach the inner the outermost core cord to the last core to give the illusion of just having one or it's not an illusion really because it is just one core cord so that's that's all it is then on the outside here I've decided to use an HO feed that on and then five eleven O's on the outside so I'm going to shift this up a little bit because I am moving out of shot so I'm going to pin this down again all right so now that we've added the seat beads on the left hand side as well I quite like to actually go through the center here as well never mind my wonky needles I've always called myself a wire bender needle bender there we go so that's nice and tight I don't know what it is with me I just tend to bend them all out of shape right so we need to just make sure that um, we have a look here this is the cord we need okay the continuation so this is I'm gonna set these aside these belong to the left this is the cord we're going to carry on and obviously this is the one we need to work away so I'm going to use that to attach and this continues the row so now I'm just moving on to the cords with the seed beads and then lastly the one with the five eleven O's and nice and use your thumb always to kind of push these back into place and it also shapes them so moving on to the other side to work away the cord with the five seed beads on that end and as you can see here we are now back to where we started so we're going to come back and work our way down the center so I'm going to set aside I said only one cord here so I'm going to do the same and I'm going to work my way back in so change knot in direction to create that circle So, 
And again. And then I'm going to move over to the other side. And the last one is reserved for another of my rose gold bicones. Um, feed that on. And then and then I basically close this off as I did before, and you can see how it um worked its way from three to two to one and again we need to lose an extra cord so what we're going to do now is set aside an extra cord on either side and we're going to repeat what we've been doing just now so except that now we're going to be adding um an eight o on this five um uh, 11 o's on this side and do exactly the same on the other side So now we have them attached and we're going to do exactly what we did before except that we are setting aside an extra cord which is these ones here and this is the way we're narrowing down this pattern to a point in order to have only two or four cords left at the bottom which we then need to attach to the jump ring. reverse knotting direction going to add anything here just going to keep this one bare and then do the same on the other side So because there's nothing in the center, it's going to be nice, a nice small oval. So I'm just going to tie this off. And then the only thing we're going to add on this side now, I set aside an extra cord, like so. And it's going to be one eight-o on either side. So it's one here. And then one on the other side. tie this off and going to repeat what we did just now so because we set aside cords as we went along um, obviously the design is slowly diminishing and it's coming to a point which is something I really enjoy about this pattern because it's so effective I really like using it and then also with seed beads you can create an illusion of um, diminishing. We're going to repeat exactly the same pattern um, but only with an 11 O and it will look like it's smaller but it isn't really. It only looks like that because we've added a smaller seed bead. nearly done so I'm going to create reverse knotting direction already and then move on and we're going to do the last bit of the section here attaching 
11.0 and then that's us nearly done what I like to use sometimes is a needle as I work my way down so it doesn't keep lifting there we go reverse knotting direction and then close off the last bit at the bottom and that's it you may need to depending on the size of your bauble this might also be too short just like the cream wave pattern um, you might need to add extra so it just depends you're going to have to try and see um, how big your bauble is basically and see if it fits or not um, and that's basically the design so the next step is to how actually tie it all together obviously you need to count the amounts of petals you have I'm going to show you how many I've used just now and then I'm going to show you how to add on the ring at the bottom so I've finished the last petal and you can see there's a bit of a gap left here this is just because when we um, put the bauble through the loop like that and then um, fold these things down the gap will actually close like that and um, just just because you're obviously folding it down so the distance will will close up so the last um, decoration with a pearl you will probably have to knot on the bauble itself or at least take two pins and close it up so that it's that it fits together nicely um, so I'm going to do this just now and then I'm going to show you how to add the ring um, one more thing I wanted to show you as well is when you are working on the decoration with the pearls in it we are going to cut off the cords that come out on the sides you have to leave the last four okay so the way I've done it you can still see a little bit left here I cut the cords off with a pair of scissors and then I come along with a lighter and I very slightly singe the ends because that will enable me to get rid of all the little stubbles that are sticking out um, I quite like using that because it's very neat I never knew uh, but any synthetic cord obviously you are able to do that anything like hemp and cords that are natural will just burn but anything that's a synthetic will um, will just melt away and uh, leaves a nice neat um, edging okay so I'm going to now finish off and then I'm going to show you how to add the ring so I finished the last section here and I have closed off the petal and this is what the ball looks like once done. Um, I just I wanted to quickly say the less cords you're going to use for the petals the more petals you will have to make. For instance for this bauble I have used one less petal than the last one I've made because I've added in a cord so the less cords you use the more petals you're going to have to make. Now I'm just going to turn this around and you can see here at the bottom I kind of double checked to see um, what sort of space I've got left okay so there's just enough space now to add one of the jump rings. Now I won't show you how to add a jump ring on the bauble that will just be there will be too many cords and I want it won't be very easy to actually demonstrate how to do that it's very simple it's just that there are a lot of cords and you're going to have to go slowly so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to release this and I'm going to set up so that I can show you how I'm actually using the baubles to attach so I'm just going to take this off and attach this to my board you can see that it's kind of sitting up um, prone a little bit just because obviously when you bend it over there is um, no gap left um, anymore because we've attached the last petal together all right so now we're at the stage where we're going to add the jump ring remember that you have to do this while it's actually sitting on the bauble you can start off like me with a um, jump ring on the board to get your first knots in because these are usually the um, the hardest um, but this is how it's done so I've just realized that the four cords probably won't fit on the jump ring of each of the sections we've made so I'm going to start off with using just the two that we have here and what we're going to do basically is attach these cords with double half hitches very easy so I'm going to slide my cord under my jump ring pull it through and then loop it over and through the jump ring again like so and then just pull that tight that's your first section and then what we're going to do is repeat what we've done just now and come through the loop again 
and make sure that you pass the cord on the right hand side of the loop if that makes sense. I'm just going to pull it and just make sure that you hold your jump ring. If you see a little gap appear between the jump ring and the ending just grab hold and pull it up a little bit so that it becomes tight and then you can just pull it up and that is the first one attached and just pull it nice and tight and then set it aside. Later on we're going to be using those to finish up the point. So then the next step is to actually come in and do exactly the same with the second cord. Once you have attached the first cord, the second one and the others thereafter should be much easier to attach. So we're going to repeat the same process. So it's through the jump ring, then out from underneath, out through the top and remember to be on the right hand side of the cord and pull that tight. It's always a little bit fiddly when you're ending up like this when you're finishing but um, the further you get on with your work the easier it actually gets so it's not that hard. So can in the second one. Okay so now also a word about the jump rings okay as you can see here my jump ring is a little bit black and that's because I have actually come in and solder that shut. Um, it's so much easier if you can get your hands on soldered jump rings that would make your life so much easier already especially for macrame because cords have a tendency to just find that gap regardless of where it is and slip out and especially with something like the intricate work we've done at the top it would be really frustrating if your cords slip out so I recommend if you can solder yourself solder it shut or else just you know buy them offhand straight away sold it shut then you don't have any problems at all okay so and basically this is all you need to do so now once you have attached the jump ring you can then move on to the next section here which in this case would be uh, one of the cream rays we're going to attach this in the same manner and then you just keep working your way around attaching all of these cords obviously remember only to use two and not four so we're going to trim off the last two and just work with two at a time just because they won't all fit on the circle okay so that's it so i'll see you in a second right so i'm halfway through and i thought i'd quickly show you how i actually attach these so the first thing i actually do is cut away these on the side that we're not going to be using because obviously as I said there's no space for them. It's quite important that you singe them otherwise they will just unravel and that would be a disaster because then you'd have to start again. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay so now it definitely won't come undone and the way I attach is you can already see sections that I have done here. So the way I do this um, I just go one by one so I'm going to grab this section here and I feed it through the ring like so it's a very fiddly job it's probably the most fiddly bit of the whole project. So I'm going to feed it through once and that will be our first lot and what I do generally is just pull it tight until it actually meets up with the end of my row as you can see it's quite fiddly pull this tight I have it usually between my knees so that it doesn't come undone next section here so that's the second knot pull that tight and if the first one has come a bit undone you just pull tightly and it'll just pull it right up back against the knot. And don't worry if they don't sit right you can adjust those later on twist them around and then when you attach the second cord it'll kind of pull it into place and that's basically how I work my way around once I've attached this one I'll just move on to the next section and so forth I thought I would actually just show you what it looks like while you're working on it um, halfway through so finally have them all attached so now this is what the bottom should look like so you've got all of the cords coming out um, and all of the remaining cords were trimmed off that we didn't use so basically only two fitted on and that actually filled the circle perfectly so I'm just going to use two. All right so the next step um, that we need to do now is actually create this spiral 
that comes out at the bottom okay so for that I'm going to take any cord doesn't really matter I'm going to take the white one and I'm going to start by knotting it around in a circle so I'm going to pick the next cord in line and basically just tie a left double half hitch and I'm just going to work my way around in a clockwise manner like so and this will just work away all of the cords that we're having and make it smaller so the first section is going to be with all of the cords and it's just depending if you want this to be the same color or you know multicolored so you can just decide for yourself how you want to do that um, but I've decided I think I'm probably going to go with brown I'm not too sure yet but we'll see so basically this is what you would be doing uh, not in a circle so I'm going to just keep doing that So now when you arrive at the last section you're going to have to decide whether you want to keep um, the brown colors or the light colors or both um, I think I will go with the dark so that means as I'm knotting I will omit the beige cords um, but I'm going to start off by first attaching um, the row the cord that's coming out of the row where we started so that's just simply all you're doing is basically knotting on top off the existing row already like so and just omitting the beige cords like so just leave them they will just stick out the center we'll cut those off as we go along and that will make the circle a little smaller just going to twist this So now we are back at the section so I'm just going to come in and trim off the beige cords so I'm just going to go and get my scissors and trim these off so we have arrived at this section here I have cut away all of the beige cords basically and I have knotted only the brown cords I have 13 cords left at this stage and the way I'm going to bring this to a point is I'm going to knot these 13 cords in a circle then I'm going to cut away two I'm going to knot 11 in a circle cut away two and then I'm going to knot nine cut away two etc etc so basically this will diminish all of the cords we have and bring the bottom of our bobble to a point which will leave us with uh, one or two cords that we can then use to suspend a pearl or something off it so let's get going so i finished with the detail at the bottom here and i'm basically left with just one as i finish off with the brown cords i just trim them off um, and the spiral gradually goes smaller and smaller and then i'm just left with the single cord that was the core and then i'm going to use that to attach whatever beads i like to it i haven't decided what i'm going to put on yet but um, that's what it's there for now i'm going to show you how to add these um moving details on the design so uh, what i've done here i'm just trying to find the empty slot here where is it where is it there we go so what i've done basically i have used one of these swarovski beads as my anchor point all right so i have taken a 
threading needle. This is just a seed bead needle. And this is actually lawn cord. And the lawn cord is made of three filaments. I've split it and I've used just a single thread to use to attach the beads. If you have fire line or any other beading thread, that'll work as well. I've just split it because it's the same color. So in case it, it chose. Then I am going through that Swarovski bead here. Pull that through and simply attach the cord to some of the knotting here just enough so that it won't actually come apart again it's just a nice way to hide uh, that a cord has been attached just going to pull this through and simply tie a knot at the top and then pull that tight out of the bottom and this gives you a nice sort of ending here that I can use now to attach a bead. So then I've come in here and the way I have done it, I have added one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven of my seven O's. Sorry, this is 11 O's. Then one, two, three, four, five of my eight O's. Then I have used um, one of the orange Swarovski, an 11 no in between, a yellow Swarovski, then an 11 no in between, and then another orange. And the other ones have decided to disappear. So I'm going to just quickly get some more, put them over here, and a pearl as well. And it's really simple. Obviously, you can decide however you like to do it. So I'm going to add these. And then as an anchor point, I've used another 11O because this will enable me to um, bring the cord up. And the way I've done it here, I've just gone through the 11O once, like so. So that already ties it in place. Then I've gone through it one more time, like that. And basically I have just looped it, pulled it tight and then basically pushed it up. And then the last step that needs to be doing is just cut off the cord and to make sure it doesn't come apart, I just use a lighter and very lightly singe so that the cord actually melts and this will not come off. So basically, as I said, the design is entirely up to you, but this is it. And um, this is it. This is the bauble completed. And I really, really hope that you will enjoy making this. And if you finish it, I would absolutely love to see the colors and the designs that you've come up with.